Hey everyone, my name is Gabriel Biederman from National Parks at Night. Give us a follow at our website, National Parks at Night. And tonight, we're here to talk about star trails. But before we get started, give us a little subscribe right down below so you can learn more with us. So when we think about night photography, most of us think about the stars, right? If we can get out to some sort of rural location where we can see the Milky Way, or even more exciting is we, we can really take long exposures and get these star trails that we can't see with the human eye. All right, so first let's talk about the ambient light in the scene so we could figure out our exposure. So we're up in rural and cold coastal Maine. The moon is just set, very little ambient light kind of coming from any of the, the communities, the towns around here. So how can I see? When I look through my camera, I can't see a thing, but I'll give you a pro tip, and this is for DSLR users only, but you can, with DSLRs, before you even turn it on, you can, you'll, you'll look through the viewfinder and you can actually see better than when you turn it on. When you turn on, uh, the camera, then the meter reads in the uh, viewfinder, and that kind of blinds us. Even though that little bit of light at night, it blinds us. So we can see a little bit better when we're just setting up by just not turning on the camera, looking through the optical viewfinder of the DSLR, and that can help us kind of get in the general area of what we want to uh, photograph and, uh, compositionally. All right, so we've got our camera set up on the tripod. The first thing we're gonna do before we even take a picture is we're gonna make sure that any sort of image stabilization or vibration reduction um, that's either in the camera or in the lens is turned off. When you're on a rock solid tripod, there is no movement. So it actually creates movement and your images at night will be blurry. So turn off the image stabilization, vibration reduction, et cetera, um, before getting set up. So how are we gonna measure the ambient light in the scene if there's very little. Well, we're gonna boost everything up. We're gonna open it all up. So we're gonna bring our ISOs all the way to 6400 ISO. This lens can go to 2.8. So when we're shooting dark uh, sky photography like this, we'll need a lens that can shoot at least minimum to 2.8. F4 lenses not will not cut it. We want a 2.8, 1.8, 1.4 lens. That'll allow us to collect more light. And then the third way is the shutter speed. So right now, I just took a test shot and it was at ISO 6400, 2.8 and 15 seconds. And I was able to collect a lot of light in the scene. I can see a little bit of the foreground as well as a, a, a pretty well-defined sky. And I'll take, well, let's take a look at the histogram. I always kind of toggle between looking at it full view. Now that histogram looks like a typical night histogram. It is a heavy on the left-hand side, but we don't want it crushed on the left-hand side. So if we can see this one at 15 seconds, it's off of the left hand, all the way on to the crush left. It's up, but it also is going and it goes past the first quarter and it's kind of almost making its way to the halfway point. I might actually go up maybe from 15 seconds, one more stop of light would be 30 seconds. Um, so it depends how much of the foreground is important to us. So now that we've got our exposure uh, nailed down, now we need to make sure that the next major thing is nailed down as well, and that is focus, okay? Focus is really incredibly challenging in a rural dark sky night scene, but I got three tips for you. Tip number one, use a flashlight and kind of choose something at a moderate distance that's important, okay? Maybe 15 to 30 feet away while when you're using a wide angle lens, something wider than a 24 millimeter lens. If we focus on that, then there's a pretty good chance we'll have that, that subject matter at 15 to 30 feet in focus as well as the stars. Tip number two, use live view on the back of the screen and zoom into the moon, a planet, or a bright star. Now this technique really only works when we have subject matter that's like 40, 50 feet away and the sky. Tip number three, and that is called hyperfocusing. You know, this is an old landscape technique. When we have subject matter that's really close, let's say six feet to 10 feet away, and we wanna get the stars sharp, we're gonna use the hyperfocus technique where we figure out, depending upon the lens, depending upon the camera, what distance we're gonna focus on generally before the subject matter that ensures that we have the subject matter all the way through to the sky 
um, sharp. And there's great apps we can uh, help you figure that out, most notably the Photo Pills app with Hyperfocus. So why do the stars trail? Well, I'll give you a little hint. They're not moving. Well, they are moving, but not the way that we're capturing them. We are actually capturing the Earth's rotation on its own axis, right? Now, the stars are going to trail because it's rotating on that axis. The stars are going to trail depending on which direction we are pointing our camera. All right, if we point it to the north, then we have Polaris in the shot. Now, Polaris is typically the star that doesn't trail that much. It's usually that just that dot, and then everything kind of rotates around it. But because we're rotating and Polaris is the closest to that northern access point, it doesn't seem like it is moving because we are rotating along that access point. So this is really interesting because we could be creative with how we are composing our subject matter and now the sky. These are two things that now we can interplay. And if we know which way the stars are trailing, we can choose the direction to ha see how they kind of collide or interact with our subject matter. All right, so we've, like I said, we had a base exposure. Now that's not gonna really create a star trail. The stars in there are, look more like star points right now. So what do I do with that exposure? So let's think about those factors, ISO, apertures, and shutter speeds, okay? So first off, ISOs, the lower the number ISO, the cleaner the image quality will be, the more saturated you know, the colors will be. So how can I extend time? Well, first thing, I'm gonna lower those ISOs. Uh, apertures, like I said, if I have that more wide open, I'll be able to see more stars. And it's pretty dark here, so I'm gonna probably keep it open at 2.8 for now. Um, there is, I have one quick pro tip for you. It's an easy way to do the, all the math that's involved in this. Um, and we, it's what we call the 6400 six stop rule. And when we're doing a high ISO test shot at 6400, and this one again was 15 seconds, if you go six stops down, that would be 100. So if we move the ISO six stops from 6400 to 100, the seconds, whatever the seconds are, in this case 15, will equal the same number in minutes. So a 15 second exposure at 6400 is gonna equal 15 minutes at ISO 100. Let's do two minutes and just let's, let's see what the stars look like at two minutes. All right, so we've got our, guys, we've got our two shots. So here's the two minute shot. And to be honest with you, let's take a look at those stars. Those are nice, uh, but they really looking at the picture, there's not enough movement, right? There's not enough movement. It just kind of looks like it's real nice uh, foreground, the water, but I'm not seeing enough of that movement for me to kind of, for, for it to be of interest in the scene. How, so, but we went to 15 minutes. Okay, now we are playing the sky against the foreground. We got a little light from our little video light, but I can take care of that. What's so fun about star trails is we cannot see it with the naked eye. Most cameras out there on the market right now, the longest exposure they can do is 30 seconds, okay? After 30 seconds, we have what's called either a T mode or a B mode. I like to live in that B mode, the bulb mode. And that basically means that you can, when you click it, you can hold it open for as long as you want. Now, usually that means if we're holding it with our finger, we're gonna to have to keep our finger on the camera. Okay, T mode, if your camera has T mode, you can click it once with your finger and then click it again and that shuts it off. That's nice, not every camera comes with T mode. If we're gonna live in bulb mode, then we need, see this wire here? This is going to a Velo Shutter Boss intervalometer. We need an intervalometer, and then we set, make the settings in here, we can set it to whatever we want. So how do we figure out star points um, first? Because that'll help us define how far we can go with our uh, star trails. Now we use a simple rule for star point photography, and the rule is the 400 rule. And this is for full frame cameras, okay? So with a full frame camera, and let's just say a, a 40 millimeter lens, we're gonna divide the, uh, the focal length of that lens, so 40 millimeters goes into 400, 10 times. That number 10, that is the maximum amount of seconds we can capture before stars will start to trail in the image. 
For instance, the lens I'm using tonight is the 14 to 24 millimeter at 14 millimeter. And so 14 goes into 400, about 26. So I, I round it out to 25 seconds. So I have a lot more time that I can kind of lower my ISOs at um, and kind of hopefully have a cleaner image with that. Now, what if we have an APS-C size uh, sensor? We're gonna use a shorter time and that number for APS-C is going to be 250. So we take with our APS-C camera, look at the lens, and we divide that number into 250. And for micro four thirds, because that sensor is even smaller, the number is gonna be 200. So take the, again the focal length of the lens and divide that into 200. And that'll give you where your starting point is for star points and then we could push it further for the star trails. As cold as we might be or as tired as we might be from a long night of shooting, we are always excited to see our work, aren't we? There's nothing more exciting than seeing a star stack come together. So let's walk you through the process of stacking stars. Now the star stacking process that I'm gonna take you through is going to be in Lightroom and in Photoshop. So first things first, we've ingested all of the images into Lightroom. And unless something needs working, I like to kind of just assemble and look through, look at the images before working on them uh, until after I stack them. Because there, once we stack them, there could be more problems that could be introduced. Um, so I'd rather kind of look at it first and then have the option to attack the, the, attack the issues in Photoshop or bring them back into Lightroom. All right, so we've got our final test shot and you know, and then this image should be our first of a series of images then that will be stacked. But again, we can always double confirm in Lightroom, we can look at the metadata and we can see the actual time it was taken. And if I'm doing four minutes, I can see this one is the uh, first image right here. So I'm going to mark the first image in the series uh, with a color. So I'm going to do that and then go all the way to the end of the series, which is right here. Okay, and I mark them with the number six, which again marks them with a red flag. Okay, and then once they are so all selected, I'm going to go up to Photo, Edit In, and then all the way down to the bottom. Open as Layers in Photoshop. Okay, so here we are. We've got the 18 now layers of images, and you can see they're all brought in as layers in Photoshop, which is all over here, right? And it doesn't look like much has happened here because these layers are not being blended uh, the right way. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure the top one is selected and go all the way to the bottom and hit shift click, okay? And then we're gonna go over here to the blending mode. And when we change from normal to lighten right there, boom. Isn't that magical? Isn't that just fantastic? We tried to pre-visualize this in the field as best we could, but it really just makes it all worthwhile when we get something like that. So what does lighten mode do? Okay. Lighten mode allows all of the bright points in all the images to come forward. Let's just zoom in one last and just check in one more thing. Let's go to 100%. I always like to look at the stars at 100% because that's how they will print. And one of the issues um, that can happen with star stacking is that we could, we have the, uh, we, the possibility of seeing the breaks in the stars because again, they're shorter stars that are being stacked together. Um, but I am looking here at those brightest stars and they look quite clean to me. All right, so final thing, we're happy with the product and we are going to uh, save it. So we have the choice to save it with all the layers intact um, as they are, but we really didn't do any work on these layers. Um, so I'm gonna flatten the image. I'm gonna take the layers and flatten it which takes any of the work that I've done and now collects those 18 images and puts it into one single slightly smaller image. And now I can just go up to again and then file save. And we can see that's recording down here and that was pretty quick. And then that just drops it right back into Lightroom. And we can see the file right there. Okay. 
And here's our final image right there. And then I'll go ahead and work on it in Lightroom and Photoshop, uh, Lightroom from there. I'm a little bit more proficient in, in, in uh, Lightroom. And my final product, converting it to black and white, giving it a little bit of extra, you know, clarity, a touch of dehaze and some other things right there is that, okay? So pretty exciting. Um, Star Trails are super fun. Again, I love it because we're kind of seeing with the mind's eye, all right? We, we go there, we, we're trying to, we compose, we look at the stars, we try to figure out which way they're gonna go, and then we settle into it, and then a lot of times we're gonna come back, and in post-processing, the magic's gonna happen, it'll pop, and it'll all come together. Well, that about wraps it up for our How to Make Star Trails video. If you wanna learn more night photography, check out our other videos on night photography. And if you wanna learn more hands-on, then come take a workshop with National Parks at Night and really seize the night.